I had cool spot for as long as I can remember. Like, I don't know where I got this game. I think I inherited it from my brother, but I'm not for sure. For as long as I've been playing video games, there's been cool spot. Now, there are all kinds of product placement shovelware out there, especially from this era and before, but cool spot was different. It was actually kind of fun. And I actually played it quite a bit. Like when I went back and played this again for this video, I couldn't believe how much of this game that I still remember and how much the songs are still stuck in my head to this day. But now that this game is 30 years old, which is upsetting, I wanted to take a look back and see what made this game different. Why was it actually kind of good? And is it worth playing today? Like I mentioned before, despite being a mascot for a giant company, you actually kind of care about Cool Spot, and it feels like the developers actually did too. Now, it turns out there's good reason for that. Released by Virgin Games in 1993, Cool Spot was developed by none other than Dave Perry, directly before he went on to help make Earthworm Jim and Aladdin, two classics of the 16-bit era. If you squint, you can see what's to come in the admittedly rougher cool spot with the fluid, compelling animations our red dot glasses has. Wondering what Dave Perry looks like? The debug menu of this game has you covered. The gameplay here is pretty straightforward in cool spot. This is a 2D platformer where you have to make your way to the end of the level and rescue a fellow cool spot in a cage. However, in order to do so, you need to collect 60% of the collectible cool points that come in the form of red dots and 7-ups. For offense, you can shoot, uh, are these 7-up bits, 7-up chunks, frozen 7-up balls? Someone has to know what these are. Hey, would you look at that? There's a, there's a manual inside this thing. Let's take a look and see if this can answer some of our questions. You can help Spot who has got Spot cool shots to spot the cages, free his fellow Spot friends, and stop Will and be a totally cool Spot. Okay, yeah, uh, whatever that is. Now, whatever these projectiles are, they move fast, like Vector Man fast. It's probably one of the best parts of the movement of the game as you blast enemies all around you in all eight directions. You can't stop and shoot in a direction you're not facing, which is a bit frustrating, so you often have to climb up and down as you try to defeat an enemy above or below you. And there's so many freaking enemies in this game. You better always be shooting because bugs and projectiles are everywhere. There's no run button, so Spot mostly moves rather slow. If you keep pushing forward, he will eventually run, but it's not very intuitive. In fact, you'll often start sprinting when you're least expecting it, leading to some cheap deaths. The game does make you wish for a proper run button, because there are levels all about pushing your jump to the limit, and it'd be nice to get a running start. The health meter itself is a cute touch, with Spot melting off more and more until he becomes completely unglued upon death. <laughs> To heal, there are little glasses of 7-Up that can restore some of your health. Not to be confused with the 7-Up you collect for the cool spot points. The timer of the levels is very much part of this game, as you frantically seek out all these cool points while it ticks down. If you die from running out of time, the game is generous enough not to take away the points you already collected when restoring you to your last checkpoint, so that's good at least. By the way, there's no battery in this cartridge, so on original hardware, you need to play through this entire game in one go. As much as I enjoyed this game as a kid, I rarely made it past the fourth or fifth level for this exact reason. And the second half just wasn't interesting enough to warrant fighting with parents and siblings to keep the TV long enough for an extended play session. Something cool, no pun intended, that this game has is a difficulty scale that you can adjust in settings. You can even change the button layout. Accessibility through difficulty settings and button remapping is something we're still struggling with getting developers to implement these days, so it's great to see it natively on a game so many years ago. Alright, let's talk about the graphics. The art design of this game kind of gives away that this was developed outside of Japan. It's an odd combination of literal and cartoony, with Cool Spot literally being the size of a spot on the side of a 7-Up bottle, and he's fighting bugs, toys, and more bugs. It's beautiful at times, but also hideously ugly at others, and there doesn't seem to be a truly consistent style like in a lot of 16-bit first-party games from Sega and Nintendo at this time. Some of these bug enemies look horrifyingly realistic, like the bees that make my skin crawl moving around like actual angry hornets. Other enemies include pajama rats, a green dot, 
mosquitoes, killable electricity, and a fish head. There doesn't seem to be much rhyme or reason outside of a vague Toy Story influence, which is interesting because Toy Story didn't even come out for another two years after this game. So, yeah, I have no idea where a lot of this came from. The one place where the art design shines is Cool Spot himself, though. There's all kinds of wacky and fun character effects, as he's a, like a literal pancake with legs moving around as kind of a 2D object made 3D. And the sound design goes a long way towards bringing him to life. Yeah, the sound design of this game rocks, so let's talk more about that. All the little noises your character makes go perfect for the little red cool dude. There are also some funny sound effects in the environment itself, like when you jump off a duck and it makes this weirdly satisfying noise. Yeah, let's hear that again. Ooh, yeah. The goofy sound effects of Spot really elevate this game, but something about the sound design also feels incomplete. You get the impression that if the sound designer just had more time and resources, they'd be able to really do something great. Because all the sound effects that are here are really good, you just want more of them. The music, on the other hand, is kind of a mixed bag. The surf song in the intro is one I can't play because I'm positive it'll get content matched. And the first level has a pretty solid tune. Everything else is pretty generic Genesis music. And some of the songs are irritating as they just loop over and over. But the songs keep getting stuck in my head. And I remember these songs from years ago, so I keep going back and forth if that's a good thing or not. Like many aspects of this game, it just kind of feels like they ran out of time. So, there isn't much of a story in this game. You start out with a map that tells you what to do, rescue spots, and off you go. But did you know this game has absolutely no bosses? Like, zero. I don't know if I've ever played a Genesis platformer of this caliber with absolutely no bosses. I don't know if this was intentional or not, but it's another element that gives this game its unfinished vibe. Breaking news, Spot and his friends, Spot, 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 and Spot are in trouble. That's actually what it says in here. For years, wild, wicked, wily Will has been trying to capture a real live Spot to prove to the world that they really do exist. Up to this date, they have never been spotted. Wait, there's no wild, wicked, wicked, wily Will in this game? Whatever, let's not worry about the story. Let's just take a look at these levels. If you collect enough of the cool points by the end of each level, you get to complete a bonus level contained entirely inside of a 7-Up bottle. Now, these levels are easily my favorite in the game as you bounce up carbonation bubbles to the top of a bottle where there's a hidden letter to find. It's really the moment where the promise of a video game about 7-Up soda comes to fruition. It's even got some of the best music in the game. Unfortunately, collecting all the letters doesn't really do anything or unlock the secret ending, you just get them and you can use them as continues. But it's worth playing all the levels just for the fun of it. I mean, if there was a mode where I could only play the bonus levels, that's totally the mode of this game I would play. Hey, there's a cool prize you can get! If you manage to get all the cool letters while playing the game on difficult without swapping any of the cool letters for a continue, and you finish the game releasing all your spot friends, you can receive a cool prize. Just take a picture of the special end screen, mail it in, Here's the address, and we got till December 31st, uh, 1993. Shell Shock. This first level is a beach level that feels perfect for a 7-Up game and a cool little dude like Cool Spot. However, for a first level, this one can be surprisingly difficult. There's lots of ultra-precise balloon platforming, and enemies here are some of the hardest in the game. The mosquitoes shoot at you, crabs hide in the ground, and hermit crabs block your shots with their shells. Like the rest of the game, you really need to take your time and clear out all the enemies or you're going to get your butt kicked. Peer Pressure We move from a beach level to a dock level, so I guess we're working our way inland? If you're not careful, this level is an absolute pain. Unfortunately, this is where we start with the basic and rather uninspiring level design that most of this game follows. You're climbing up and down between square chambers with lots of enemies coming at you from the edge of the screen. You have to go through every one of these repetitive chambers to get all the cool points while being careful not to die from just bees and everything else. Setting aside the bonus levels, the stage design is one of the weakest areas of this whole game, keeping it out of the pantheon the Mario's and Sonic's of the time. Programmer's hint, the guy who laid out all the levels and enemies in the game is called Bill. 
feel free at any time to shout out Arg Bill or Bill when it seems like a jump can't be made. And they're really throwing Bill under the bus on this. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Off the wall. What's more fun than killing bees? How about spiders inside the walls of a dirty building? While some of the bugs keep their scarily realistic vibe, mostly you'll be fighting mice growing cheese? You can use the mouse traps as a spring if you're brave, but mostly just watch out for spikes and barbed wire. Also, according to the manual, these cool spots have all been trapped at places where cool spots typically hang out. So, do cool spots hang out in the walls of buildings? Are they like rats and vermin? Like, ugh, I don't want my 7-Up coming from that. Waiting around. The level name puns kind of take a drop in quality here as we enter a toy shop with a giant pool covering the entire floor. The wallpaper definitely says toys and there's stuff on the shelves. I guess this is a toy shop. This level goes full vertical and if you slip off of one of those flying saucers, your punishment isn't necessarily death. It's worse than that. You have to start it all over from the bottom. There are even cool points that lead you back to the very beginning of the level in order to get them, forcing you to redo the whole level anyways. At least the rubber ducky sounds are cute. Yeah, that's the stuff. Toying around. And this isn't even a pun. Like, it's just playing around, right? Like, that's what they're playing off of? But I, now we're inside a, another room of the same toy shop. And what kind of toy shop is this place? We got a bunch of freaky dudes in the background. There's tacks everywhere. And there's the same trucks and robots over and over. And what giant kid left their shoes on the shelf? I'm not going to lie. This is where the game always sort of lost steam for me as a kid. Exploration of this place is tedious. It's every part of the level is just the same stuff repeated over and over. But at least when you're done with this, you're done. Right? Right? Radical Rails. I think this level acts as the sort of boss of this game, playing the victory music as you slip and slide all over the place, scrambling to get enough cool spots to rescue the little guy in the upper right corner. It's more of a frustrating maze than anything else. I feel like there was probably a story reason for this level to exist, like this is the factory where they squeezed the 7-Up out of spots or something, but... Despite the speakers and science vibe, there's never any indication of what this is or why it's in the game. Like, I... Is it in the toy shop? Wound up. Wait a second, we just saw this level. It's the exact same thing as toying around with just one extra enemy type. This toy shop part 2 level was already kind of tiring the first time around, and it just completely sucks having to play another variant of it again so soon. I really hope we don't get another repeat level. Anything would be better than that. All right, I'm going to put a warning here. People with photosensitivity and motion sickness should not watch the next part. I'll let you know when it's safe to look again. Locomotive. Oh my god, I take it back. I take it back. This is awful. I hate this. I hate this. This is definitely new, but at what cost? This level starts with you on the back of a toy train going 800 miles per hour in an endless toy store. Maybe it's in hell. I don't know. Then goes into the sky as you clamber up towards this cool spot waiting for you. This level will make you sick. It takes a lot to get to me, but holy cow, this is some brutal platforming. You're jumping around on tiny collapsing UFO platforms as you go cross-eyed from the background. The game makes it even worse by forcing you to redo it every time you fall. I had to walk away just a few times to even just get my bearings. Ah, uh, Bill! Bill! Why, Bill? Why did you do this, Bill? It's safe to look now. We're, we're done with locomotive. Back to the wall. This is just a repeat of the wall level now with some little lightning bolts that you can kill with cool spots projectiles. Even in the random roster of enemies in this game, the lightning bolts feel particularly half-baked. Dock and roll. This is just the boat pier level, again with a different layout and more enemies, and it's really boring. By this time in the game, I was already done with the bonus level, so I didn't even have those to look forward to. The game really feels like it's just padding at this point. Surf Patrol. This is the last level of the game, and the best you could do with the name was Surf Patrol? Like, not the final sprint or something, you know, to get you excited that you're almost done? But no, this game is officially exhausted at this point, and it limps over the finish line with just a repeat of level 1. Except, this time there's a net in the background. Great. Through all this, there isn't a single boss, not even at the very end of the game. 
even if you complete all the bonus levels, all you get for an ending is a bunch of cool spots spelling out the word cool for you. Some credits, and uh, a see ya. Then you're kicked back to the beginning of the game. Nothing has changed, except for you. You, who are now older, wiser, and closer to death than you once were. But wait, we're not done, because there's more! The Genesis Cool Spot game first came out in 1993, but apparently it did well enough that Virgin Games decided to crank out versions for every system imaginable. First up, of course, is Sega's direct competitor in the 16-bit wars, the Super Nintendo. The music in this version of the game is awful. If you ever wanted to see what a difference the Genesis FM chip can make compared to the SNES sample system, here you go. And before you go after me in the comments, some of the best video game music ever made is on the Super Nintendo, so clearly the samples can work great, but if you're making synth music, dang that FM chip does sound good. While there are some upgrades with the visuals and even a few gameplay tweaks, the music is just not good and it really takes away from the experience. There's not even celebration music when you complete the level. So this is something that drove me crazy in the original Genesis game. See those signs at the beginning of each level? Spot always walks in, looks at his map, and then walks the other way. By this logic, those sign names are all for levels that Spot doesn't go to. So when I saw that the sign direction had been changed for the Super Nintendo version, I assumed they fixed it. Until Spot goes the other way instead! What the heck?! Also, the sound of the collection of cool points in this game sounds exactly like item interaction in Stardew Valley, and it's driving me crazy. Alright, let's take a look at some of the other versions. Next up, cool spot for my dear old Game Gear. I'm not gonna lie, this port on the Game Gear actually looks pretty good for an 8-bit system. The controls are kinda clunky, but they work. At least the music manages to be better than the Super Nintendo, but I mean, that's a low bar to clear. I'm actually pretty impressed with this port. The spot sprite looks fantastic, and he has a ton of life in him still. You can look up, look down, he flips and moves in all sorts of cool ways. It's easily one of the better looking Game Gear games I've seen. Would I play it? No way, the Genesis version is a thousand times better, but still a cool, this time pun intended, piece of history. Now let's go even more basic. Let's take a look at Cool Spot or the Game Boy. Whew, now here's really where we can see the difference between the power of the Game Gear and the Game Boy. This is clearly a port of the Game Gear port simplified within an inch of his life. Game Boy games can be good, but this one is not. However, I will say, still better music and sound effects than the Super Nintendo version. Believe it or not, there are even more ports on other systems, but these are just the only ones that I actually saw in the wild back in the day. The series did continue with Cool Spot Goes to Hollywood, but it made the same mistake as Sonic by going to an isometric perspective that makes it almost unplayable. So after all of that, is Cool Spot worth playing today? Well, I think throwing it in for the first few levels can't hurt. I mean, it's not the best game on the planet, but it's pretty fun and you're not missing anything if you don't play the second half of it. I mean, it's a lot of just repeated levels and you can safely skip all the ports. Those aren't worth playing, but the original has a lot of charm to it. And if you love Earthworm Jim and Aladdin, like this is an interesting historic look at like where those games came from. So yeah, cool spot. Makes me miss the little guy. I mean, if you look at the current 7up website, like what is this? How is this better than Cool Spot? Like, look, you got a little, little cool dude. Like, bring him back. 7up, what are you afraid of? Who's in charge over there? Dr. Wiley Will, William, William Wills? I mean, we never saw him. He could be the CEO now. That would explain why there's no spots. He extracted all the 7up from him. You can help Spot who has got cool Spot. You can help Spot who has got cool. You can help Spot who has got Spot cool shots to spot the cages, free his fellows. Spot friends, stop Will and be a totally cool cool Spot. 